So in this recording, we would like to discuss the chain rule. I'm not going to use the PowerPoint this time for this particular lecture. I'm just going to start with talking about what the chain rule is. So this is section 3.4, the chain rule. So the chain rule is talking about if we have a function inside of a function. So if we have a function inside of another function, then in order to take the derivative of a combination like this, you are going to take the derivative of the outside first and leave the inside function as is, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And that's it. That's how we would compute our chain rule. So let's take a look at some examples, because I find it best to learn by example. So let's look at a function, the square root of x squared plus 1. Now this is a square root function where there is a quadratic inside of the square root function. In order to take the derivative, we first have to rewrite the square root in exponential form. So recall that the exponential form for a square root is a raising the inside to the one half power. So we have x squared plus one raised to the one half power. So I see that again, I have a function inside of another function where the outside function is this exponent and the inside function is my quadratic. So when I go to take the derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of the outside first. So we can see now that it's written in exponential form, we would use a power rule. So we'll bring the exponent down in front. We do not touch the inside function. And we come back up to the exponent and subtract 1. Well, 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. The second part of the chain rule says now, multiply by the derivative of what's inside, the inside function, which would be 2x plus 0. Now remember, the only simplifications that I do require is that you rewrite negative exponents, because negative exponents aren't applicable. So this negative exponent just means to take it down to the denominator, and since it's being multiplied by a fraction, well, actually, let's simplify this even more. We have 2x in the numerator, and in our denominator, we have 2, and now we have x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. That's positive because we moved it down to the denominator. We can simplify by crossing off those 2s, giving us x over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power, or you can rewrite it with the radical. Let's try another example. Let's look at y equals x cubed minus 1 raised to the 100th power. Now, again, I see an inside function, x cubed minus 1, and an outside function, the exponential. So it is a chain rule. And when we go to take the derivative, we're going to focus on the outside first, which is that exponent, and perform a power rule. Bring the 100 down in front, do not touch the inside function, come back up and subtract 1. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x squared plus 0, because negative 1 is a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0. I can simplify if I want by multiplying the 3 times 100 and getting 300x squared times x cubed minus 1 to the 99th power, or I could have just left it as is. Moving on to the next example, we have f of x is equal to e to the 2x times the square root of 2x plus 5. Now there's a lot going on in this problem. The first thing you always need to ask yourself when there's multiple rules involved is what is the bigger picture? So if I'm looking at this problem as a whole, 
It's not the big picture of a chain rule. The bigger picture is a product rule. So I know that I need to set this up as a product rule, and then I'll actually be dealing with two chain rules as each piece of the product is a chain rule in itself. That's why I showed you the product rule by breaking up the first and the second functions and taking their derivatives separately for when we get to sections like this one where the product rule isn't so straightforward and there's rules inside of rules. So I'm going to label my first function, the exponential e to the 2x, and take the derivative of that exponential, and that would be e to the 2x times the derivative of the inside function, 2. So I performed a little chain rule there. Now the second function is the square root, which remember from our first example, we need to rewrite that in exponential form in order to perform a derivative. I see this is also a chain rule as I have a linear function embedded inside of an exponent. So take the derivative of the exponent first using a power rule. So we have 1 half times 2x plus 5 raised to the negative 1 half power. And then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which happens to just be 2. Now, before I put this all together in the product rule, I probably should simplify that, that second function's derivative. So simplifying, I get 2 over 2 times 2x plus 5 raised to the 1 half power. Took care of that negative exponent by bringing the function down to the denominator. I also see that the 2's cancel. Please do not go to algebra jail by magically floating the denominator to the numerator because you think there's no more numerator. There's always a placeholder, and that placeholder is 1. I'm just going to write it as a radical because it's easier to write. Now let's put it all together for the overall function's derivative. We have the derivative of the first times the original second plus the derivative of the second times the original first, which we can technically write in the numerator of that fraction. And there we go, we have ourselves this uh, example which combines both product rules and two chain rules. Let's do one more. Let's do g of x is a function that's defined by sine of tangent of 2x. So here our outside function is the sine function and the tan of 2x is the inside function. This is technically a chain rule inside of a chain rule because of this 2. It's not just x inside of the tan function. So we'll be performing a chain rule inside of a chain rule. Again, the bigger picture is a massive chain rule. So I am going to start by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is our sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. Remember, when you're performing the chain rule, you only take the derivative of one function at a time. And you always start from the outside and work your way in. So now that I've taken the derivative of the outside and have not touched anything inside, I'm moving into the next layer. So the next layer is the tan part. So now I am going to take the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared. And again, I am not going to touch the inner inner side function. Then I'm going to multiply by the inside of that function, which is the 2x, and the derivative of 2x is 2. And there you go. You have a chain rule inside of a chain rule and we just work our way from the outside in. That's the chain rule.